Hello to a new session of securing Spark's ProCloud server. As you mentioned, maybe in the last meeting, I just opened the board and it was easy to access um, with the knowledge of the public IP address, the backend system. And now one week later, I hope that nobody has recognized that he can modify my repository there. So it's no high risk, but because uh, you, have sh you sh should have seen the video, you have recognized the IP address, you should have at least enterprise architect to access that. But uh, you never know. So let's see if my Indian server is still there. And uh, Yes, anything has been modified, but um, as far as I can see, no hackers there. So good luck. Uh, nobody mentioned that you can hack my repository because it's only open and every enterprise architect user is able to access that. So what are the possibilities to secure um, the backend of enterprise architect? First of all, of course, there is a possibility to activate um, user security. Um, but this is not the first aspect I want to address. Because if you have a backend system that is um, using an internet information server, uh, then you have, of course, this firewall stuff. But a firewall, if the port is open, allows everything that goes through this firewall. So um, what are the operating systems possibilities to secure a ProCloud server. So um, at the moment, we are going directly from Enterprise Architect to the ProCloud server. So port 804 is activated. Um, if you want to activate Internet Information Server, then you have to open the Server Manager and install some additional roles and features. First of all, um, I go through this, I say the status server, and then we find out that the web server is not installed at the moment. Additionally, I want to have also the management tools. This must not be on the same machine, but in this case, I have only a single server. And the next tip is to activate the features um, do I need some additional ones? No, not so far. I can see here. And now I'm going to activate the role, the web server role. And you see static content is activated, directory browsing. So everything else is not really required. Maybe some logging tool may help. We want to have um, static content compression. You can also activate the dynamic ones, but it's not necessary. For security, only the filtering is activated. I want to have basic authentication. Um, you might have client certificates, but um, in our sample, I will only use basic authentication. This is not very secure if you are in HTTP only environment. So much better is Windows authentication, but even that um, it's recommended to have um, at least HTTPS. So from that side, we will need CGI support because we want to activate WebEA later on with PHP. We want to have ISAP extensions. That is an ex because uh, ProCloud Server provides an SAP extension. I want to activate um, and the WebSocket support protocol is not necessarily needed. ASP so. Typically, don't install things that you don't need in your environment. I think it is enough to have CGI and SAP extensions, and everything else is not required. Even the static content is not required, but to test if the server is working, it makes a lot of sense to have also static content activated. So we can uh, watch out what's happening in India uh, during the installation of the server. Um, what happens, uh, what we can already prepare, because um, it, uh, one of the first steps this installation does is creating directories. So we can open 
in parallel already a directory so it's not here it will become inetpub but, um, but we will watch out what is in the spark systems directory available for making these things run so we have two additional folders it's isapi for the isapi filters and here we see there are two different implementation one is http only i recommend that one but you can take both because i think it's even the same code base but different different um, entry points the very important file is this one this is seap um, no i don't want to update the server hey, thank you always if you try to install a server then windows says it needs an update don't care um, this file is very important this sseep and there um, we can open it um, it's it's really simple file but it's the most important one because it's the entry point and the configuration of this sseep file is from where the, the service that terminates at the internet information server will access the pro cloud server behind and the funny story is um, you have to enter here the management port so 803 is the default management port for accessing the pro cloud server so enterprise architect is making an http post to that link that is later on activated in internet information server and that link brings us to the local host on the same machine uh, to the pro cloud server using the management port that's very important to know that 804, 803, sorry, 803 is the right, um, the right port for that. So I can save it already. Um, we see the installation is done. So what I can do, and I really recommend it, that everything that has to do with um, web is not ev anywhere in the environment. So you copy that and bring it to the official inetpub directory. And um, here is a www root, and I place the ESAP filters and the web EA there. Um, the web EA is a bunch of files, PHP based, um, and there is some, some configuration I will show later on. So now we have installed on this server in India, the internet information server by default the internet information server is activated uh, with a default file already on port 80 so the http port so if i open a browser and once again you see i'm in india so i'm working from austria um, and i'm configuring a server in india um, so we can verify if the Microsoft Internet Information Server is already watching um, what's happening on localhost. So it's port 80, you can trust me. And there we have this default site. Um, of course, if you don't trust me, we can just remove these both files and create a static file because we support, after installation, we decided to support a static file. And yes, once again, um, it's not a good server configuration because you don't see the extensions. So we really want to see the file name extensions so we activate them. And uh, because txt is not supported by default, we can name it HTML if we want. And this file extension is supported. So if I say here localhost, then nothing happens because this file is empty. But I can type in here some content. Uh, open with, uh, open it with the notepad, make some quick HTML stuff. Yes. Oh, just type in hello world. And this is pretty enough. Hey, we are. Oh, interesting. However, um, so I save it, I make a refresh and you see hello world. So it, the internet information server is running, uh, just providing an HTML file. What is not working is that below web EA, there is already a file that's called index.php. So um, you can go here and say web EA 
slash index dot php but because um, their mime type is not installed and even php is not installed so this is not working um, for configuring the first step i want to present in this video is how to configure the access from um, enterprise architect um, to the pro cloud server using internet information server so what we have to configure now is the internet information server um, so still not found so we can open and we will find because we can go through and we find it here the internet information server uh, services there we have the possibility there we see this configuration part and uh, what you should know is that by default is all everything is default pool and we have this default website pointing to the site we have seen before in the backend so this site inetbub www root it points to this directory and whatever is in this directory uh, will be started and you hear, here you see the configuration of the default document so if you open it you see that these names of documents are supported by default um, as um, if, they are, if you don't provide a uh, file name a file extension these files are, are addressed so if you want to configure this sseep so this means this is the link file for the pro cloud for enterprise architect so enterprise architect uses exactly this file um, to to access the repository um, at the moment this is is below the ww roots and um, why ever it makes a lot of sense to have it in the root uh, because then you have don't have to provide the sub link so it's easy to pro to provide this sseep also in this directory don't move it i don't know why exactly but it's very important that this file is also in this directory and in the directory you want to access from enterprise architect later on at the moment uh, this file extension sseep is not a supported handler so by default you can see for handler mapping that there is a configuration for any file there's no support for xe or for dll and we also can see so we go on this uh, server level so we have three stages we have the server level the application pool the default website so uh, we configure the the handler of enterprise architect on the server level so um, you can also define decide to make it on the site level but in this case i will configure it on the server level what i have to define first is a module and i want to add a so-called managed module that's not correct because we don't want to have a managed one we want to have a native one we want to configure an, uh, a native module because we have a dll and not an asp.net so i want to register a native module and this native module is um, my esrp module and i take the http link and i name it sparks link module okay now i have um, re registered a new module and you see module is just a naming convention and i have defied, decided to name it sparks link module that's the first step what you can do here is that you uh, of course you can edit it but nothing else has to be defined here. The second step you should do is to configure a so-called um, handler mapping. And this, in this handler mapping, I define a module mapping. So we have defined a module first, and now I decide to make a module mapping. And this module mapping uh, needs then the, the name of the link the file you want to open with using this module 
and in our set in our case this file is um, is this one and I decide not to take wildcards whatever because it's exactly this file we have no other SSEP files so I configure for Sparks Cloud Link SSEIP which file I want to use and I want to use the Sparks Link module for that Um, there is no executable because it's a DLL and I name it Sparks Link. Additionally, because this uh, needs some additional register access rights, I define the execute rights for uh, this link. So now we have defined better name convention would be name it handler but it's not a sparks link um, that's the handler mapping for okay i will make a better name um, i name it sparks handler it's not possible to rename so okay i, I, I leave it in sparks link um, enterprise architect is an even broker server is a 32-bit application so on the application pool level at the moment we have only this default application pool there you have to define the basic settings and here is by default microsoft always tries to sell itself um, is that they use net we don't need net in our case we have um, no managed code and additionally we have some advanced setting that is very important we have to activate the function enable 32-bit application everything else especially identity and so on is um, by default a, a good configuration so nothing else you have to define it's the most important is that you enable 32-bit applications here um, yes i think this was it and we can verify already with enterprise architect um, we have in our sample the connection to the cloud and I can just make um, start open project so the foreign former configuration was South India and we said local host and connected directly to port 804 meaning that is the port where the ProCloud server is watching port 80 is the port where the internet information service watching what you're doing and now I start this and it says okay there is an error not allowing to access uh, to connect to the service um, meaning there could be some misconfiguration and I have already an idea because for the default website um, you have the additional uh, requirement that the Sparks Cloud link is by default disabled and you have to give some feature permissions also on the website level and as as soon as you allow execute rights then you have all the elements that are executing things activated um, so cgi and isap dll what we need uh, for our configuration so once again oh and a good it's a good um, good idea to be clear after such configurations where I load DLLs and unload DLLs to restart the server just to be sure that all the things that you have configured are loaded the right way so I go back to my project browser I don't want to put the bow so I move it the system output is interesting so I but I move it there um, here we see the configuration where is my project browser Um, project browser cannot see anymore uh, don't care about to make open project connect to cloud once again 80 and open it and the good news is now it's working ah, here's my project browser just <laughs> removed everything sorry um, just the system output I want to have somewhere else so 
you see enterprise architect is very configurable but the good news is that um, now after we have activated the um, handler too so the security is activated i can now access um, the model using internet information server instead of direct connection to my uh, installation um, of course now we can also decide that we change things in the network because here we have open the port 804 so meaning that this was the direct access to the ProCloud server without internet information server configuration in between so we can decide to remove that so this card delete it delete the security role 804 and um, you see that there is no other uh, port open from outside only internal ones so i decide to define a new one so thank you it's deleted um, i want to define a new one a new inborn power port rule now we can use the default configurations here so http is predefined and so i can activate the port 80 and from my local machine so it will take a little um, it's allowed that any source and any installation of course we can be more restrictive here but now i can use from my enterprise architect that is installed in vienna in austria uh, we can go to south india but don't use the port 804 it will not work anymore um, use the default port 80 so it's still the same server but now you have configured internet information server from microsoft to be the handler of the request for sseap that means whatever enterprise architect sends through uh, will go through the internet information server um, so this was because sometimes the configuration takes a little bit longer but i can just reconnect um, and then it should work as you can see already here uh, we are navigating through a model with https um, through the firewall using port 80 and uh, if i switch back to the india server uh, then you can see um, that the internet information server default website you can browse um, we can explore it then we can see that there is at the moment this sseap configured at the moment it's not secured at all because we have not defined any authentication but the internet information server is a very strong tool of course you can use also apache for it but you can activate authentication here and at the moment it's auto uh, anonymous authentication so if i disable it then nobody can authenticate but i can activate as an example windows authentication and you can configure any that you want um, you have all, all additional settings you can define uh, additional security providers and so on but now i have activated for any request that goes through port 80 to this internet information server uh, that we need windows authentication um, what's the difference now so if i go back to my local machine it says oh access is denied because um, the port is not available anymore because it's not authenticated um, authenticate authentication request is only requested after opening the project so can connect to cloud port 80 and what happens now is that the default windows authentication pops up here and it asks me for credentials of the server and it does not even help if you store these credentials because they are always new because it's a new handshake but you have to type in the windows credentials it has nothing to do with enterprise architect itself it's just securing the link to this backend server and now we are using HTTPS at the moment for securing 
uh, the access to the Bo Cloud Server backend. So for today, I think it was a huge step forward to uh, secure the Bo Cloud Server using Internet Information Server. You have seen uh, that we have configured using the Internet Information Services Manager the server itself. We have defined a new module provided by Spark Systems. We have defined the handler mapping. We have configured the application pool, meaning 32-bit application uh, as a backend is allowed. We configured the file that is stored behind the default website that's named Spark's Cloud Link SSEAP. And this file, there was the very important trick uh, to configure this file by setting uh, not that one by setting it to 803 the management board thank you and if you are happy to see this share the video like it and give some feedback goodbye